This morning, then, in terms of our scripture lesson, that is one of them. And our others comes from the letter to the Hebrews. And I read two verses from Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh God, this morning we celebrate your saints. We celebrate your saints. Those who have lived their lives on this earth in such a way that they have come to the glory that you've promised. So now be with us, stay with us this morning as we continue to worship you, to give thanks, and to seek your wisdom for our life. Open this word to us. Amen. We really can't overstate the impact of COVID-19 on the world. Globally, locally, personally, everyone has been affected big ways, loss of life, employment, businesses, loss of a sense of community and security, a lot of disruption in the lives of our young families particularly, pronounced as parents try to, have tried to go to work while homeschooling and dealing with lack of daycare. Our daughter Leanne and her husband Alex are both professors at Franklin and Marshall College in Lancaster and they have a little boy Kai, our grandson who just turned three a couple of weeks ago. Uh, Kai was 16 months old at the time of the shutdown in March 20. He, um, from that time until July of this year, Kai was pretty much home. And I know that this story has been repeated again in thousands and thousands of families. Kai was pretty much home all the time. Alex and Leanne balanced their schedules. They had a college babysitter or two that came now and then. But for the most part, and I mean almost all of it, Kai was home with mom and dad and two dogs. And then July came and uh, daycare reopened and there was a real need to return to socialization in some normal life. So Kai was off to daycare at the beginning of July and let's just say in the beginning, Kai was not a big fan, um, a lot. A lot of, cry, of crying, even some weeping and wailing. Um, I have permission from his mom to tell this story, by the way. Kai is very verbal, and at the review of every day when it came to dinner time, and Alex and uh, Leanne would talk about it and say, like, what'd you do today at daycare, Kai? And he would say, I cried and I cried. <laughs> every day. What'd you do? I cried and I cried. Okay. Well, the days went on, and then there came a day when he was asked, and he said, I played with trucks, and I cried and I cried. Okay. Right? There is. And then, and then came the day when he was asked what he did. He said, I played with Juniper, and I cried a little. <laughs> I played with a friend. I made a friend and I cried a little. Time has gone on and he has made friends and shared cars and the tears are gone but not completely. I've thought about that line a lot. Again, even before my mom died, I, I thought about this line, this transformation, this transition for Kai as a metaphor for many of us in the grieving process. Somehow, our hope and our prayer is that through time and support of others and the grace of God, we'll get to the time when we can say, I cried a little, <laughs> right? In the beginning, those days are I cried and I cried, or I thought about this person, 
all the time, every, every day, so much pain. And then maybe, again, through the grace of God and time and the love of others, we find ourselves in that moment where we can find joy. Not all through the day, and like if I were to tell Kai's whole story, he still has bad days, right? We all do. No matter how much time goes on, there will be that day when we feel this loss, however long ago it happened, so acutely that if someone asked us at the end of the day, what did we do? I cried and I cried. But maybe, again, and hopefully and prayerfully, we share this journey together where we can say, I played with trucks. <laughs> I met a new friend. I enjoyed the trees. I dug in my garden. I, I read a book. I played some music. I found some joy. It's not that the pain is gone. It's still there. But it's a recognition that there is something more. That song that Marion sang and Jim played for in the Holy City, that hope, that prayer, that's promise. What we believe is that there is a day that in heaven there will be no weeping and crying mourning. But in this life, we will continue to struggle. And we are continually invited to find joy. To find joy. Not the superficial happiness that ignores suffering or loss, because we know really that's not possible. Um, but the joy that comes from within, from knowing that God's peace and presence and power is with us no matter what. I almost always at funerals read the passage from Romans that nothing can separate us from the love of God. That is the source of our joy. So this morning, we are blessed to be together, to celebrate a great cloud of witnesses. I can almost feel them, right? And we haven't begun to list and even lit up. We would light up the whole sanctuary. If we even considered those who've sat in these pews who's, who have gone on before us. So our lives are lit up. Our lives are lit up by their love and their presence still with us. And it is okay to cry. It is okay for us to have days when that's what we would say we did. But that's not the whole story, right? For we want to live lives that give honor to those who've gone on before us. That even in the challenge that we find that we can live all for the sake of joy.